Hey everyone, welcome to Messengers of Light. And today I'm going to be inviting on Kay Ashley uh, to talk about her work. She calls herself the healer of healers. And from that, I presume what she means is that she heals us, the healers. But I want to find out more. I want to find out about her work, her spiritual awakening, because Kay Ashley, who do you think you are? <laughs> Welcome to Moving On TV. Ready? Hi, Kai. <laughs> How are you today? I'm good, thanks. How are you? I'm brilliant. I'm brilliant. So um, I wasn't sure how to pronounce your name. As I say, I thought it was maybe Kay, and then I thought maybe it's Kai, but you just confirmed it. Now, you were saying to me, you know, as we don't know each other very well, but you were saying that you actually were born in Australia or New Zealand? Yeah, I was born in Australia. In Australia, what part of Australia? Um, down, well, I was born in Sydney, lived in Newcastle and also up at the Gold Coast. But I haven't lived in Australia since 2008. I've been living abroad in different countries around the world. Okay, okay, because uh, I did go to Australia quite a while ago. I did the whole of... Um, Queensland and all that yeah. it's absolutely beautiful and I was in Sydney for about five months I think oh yeah oh I, I loved it it was gorgeous gorgeous um, so now you're in the UK and where do you live what part of the UK uh Essex by the beach at the moment yeah oh by the beach wow <laughs> mind you today has been oh today I think today the weather is really going with the way we are <laughs> and down and up and down and up and down anyway it's lovely to have you on uh, messengers of light thank so, you as i say i always like to find out how people woke up how the spiritual awakening happened because the reason i created this program is because a lot of people a lot of people are going through so much and a lot of them are waking up, the heart chakra is opening, yeah. and they don't know how to, to navigate it, they don't know what's happening to them, and so this program is very useful because people like ourselves that woke up quite a while ago are able to pass on how it was for us, and so it's not so scary or so difficult for them. Okay, exactly. so back to the beginning. So. Where were you born? And just tell us a little bit about your childhood. Okay, well, um, my childhood definitely prepared me to be a healer because it was not a happy one. I was a very unhappy child. I came from a home where my parents were teenage drug addicts and criminals, and I spent my first two or three years in a drug house, which obviously was not safe for a child. Uh, I've done a lot, many, many, many hours of healing work on like the rejection and the abandonment issue. Uh, but then fortunately I was taken away to live with my grandparents and my, my teenage aunties. But that had its own set of problems because, you know, these are, uh, are people who haven't had their awakening and as well intentioned and meaning as they are, they still had all their programs from the Victorian heritage where it's about being strict and do what I say and not as I do and where children aren't even really respected as a person, really. So, um, yeah, so I got to learn a lot through that and I was bullied a lot growing up. So I had a lot of trauma and it sent me very bitter and cynical. I actually used to be very cynical and when I was a teenager and I was living at a home with my much older boyfriend, I ended up becoming very um, mean, very mean spirited, very awful. And I was lying a lot. And that was actually really relevant because that was a big part of my first spiritual awakening where I started noticing how everything that I was doing because I was so angry at the world actually just ended up harming me. 
the lies ended up psychologically damaging me and the people around me. So I had a very rude awakening, a very shocking wake up call. And um, around 22 is when that, 21, 22 is when that really, my first awakening happened. And uh, yeah, so that from there, I started practicing morality. And the first type of personal development I ever got into was Buddhism, where I started practicing loving kindness meditation and okay. how to actually right. have morals for the first time. Thank you. Wow. Hang on, wait for <laughs> That is so honest. <laughs> yeah, I get told that. <laughs> this is what I love about uh, about spiritual, you know, light workers, indigos, crystals, star seeds. We haven't got that. Um, what am I trying to think? That barrier. We come right out and we say it, and yeah. it's beautiful. So thank you so much. I'm uh, just going back a little bit. Uh, it's very interesting what you just said sometimes there is actually a person or a mentor I know there was in my life that actually showed me something where I was going not going on the right path did you have anyone like that at all in your childhood someone that I, I don't know I'm kind of picking something up here that maybe there was someone like a teacher or a mentor of some kind that gave you a little bit of direction maybe um, I think maybe there are a couple of teachers along the way that were like standout, lovely teachers. I can think of maybe two. Um, but really, when I just think of my childhood, it, it was very lonely and I always felt misunderstood and very out of place. Um, so it, it was a lot of figuring it out on my own in the, in the early days, really well, for a lot of it. Right, right. Yeah. Well, this is it. So. We go, we seem to go through so much in order to find out what we're here to do. And it can take a little while. So um, going back again to, to what you were saying, what, what interested you in life? I mean, well, you, you obviously didn't come straight into the spirit world and the work you're doing. Did you do any other kind of work at all that you felt you didn't want, you wanted to let go of it? Or did you feel that something wasn't right? Or did it actually lead you into what you're doing now, do you think? Yeah, well, everything led me into what I'm doing now. Uh, I think that's why as lightworkers, we're so open to talking about it because we see how everything is connected. Um, I, growing up, I did a lot of sort of odd jobs like uh, waitressing, which I was so good at and I loved, but you know, I didn't like the hours of pay. Um, I did some, I've done, I've done a lot of jobs that were very soul sucking. Uh, the time when I was really mean, when I was around 19 and 20, I was working for a very dishonest company as a salesperson. And, um, that was part of the, the lies that shocked me awake when I saw that, oh my God, like the, my actions actually do matter. And the person that I am do matter. Um, and then after that, it was just like, you know, regular call center stuff and whatever. And then when I finally left Australia, I actually ran my own business as a high-end escort in San Francisco, um, which had its own sort of lessons and actually taught me about marketing, which is hilarious. Um, and it was from there during that time when I had a big nervous breakdown um, and I had to go into healing. And so my spectacular nervous breakdown led me to get into healing and and it was after I left San Francisco that I first started working as a professional healer and that was about back in 2012. Yeah we like to call it a breakthrough don't we? <laughs> yeah a spiritual, a, a, a spiritual it's nervous, breakthrough. <laughs> yeah it's not a nervous breakdown it's a spiritual breakthrough. Okay could you tell us a little bit about that what did it feel like when you had your breakthrough or first of all the breakdown itself because that's interesting to hear and then how it led to the breakthrough yeah well I was the type of person you asked me earlier what my interests were and my my interest was to experience life so I'm a, a, a quite a lot more extreme than most people whereas I started learning very young. When I had that first spiritual awakening, I started learning how to learn. Before that, I always thought I was stupid. And then I started learning how to learn from life. 
And that gave me a thirst for negative experience, positive negative experience. But my life was very drama filled, very chaotic. My relationships were usually quite harmonious. Well, not in the early days. But anyway, my whole point for saying this is it all led me to this place where as I was living my life out of alignment, where I was really pushing myself through these negative experiences and having like this, oh my God, like that just happened. Now I know this about life. You know, these other things just happened. Like I remember I got arrested and I almost went to actual prison and I didn't and I got out of it. But while I was in the most awful experience, I was sitting there looking around going, huh, now I understand this on a deeper level. And I almost felt relieved that I understood because you can't understand it unless you go through it. And I've been through can a lot of that? Sorry, can you explain when you say I understood that on a deeper level? Again, when people are just waking up, what does that mean? I know what it means, but what, yeah. how can you explain that? It meant that I had a cellular imprint in my body of the exact feelings of what it's like to be in that situation, of the fear you feel, of the powerlessness of, and the reason why it was so important to me was because it helps me understand others. And I've always had a big quest to understand life. And that's why I've thrown myself headlong into so many negative experiences, which I don't, I don't really do anymore because I've sort of overcome that. I had so many intense experiences that now my, I've, I've learned how to not do that basically, but it used yeah, to be one thing really after the other. That's really interesting. So that's leading me to something else there. I'm, I'm really glad you said that. <laughs> um, because so, okay, you said you actually were going into these negative experiences. Now, where is the, how do you draw the line then between going into these experiences because you feel you want to feel them in order to overcome them and self-sabotage, which is a big thing that you're actually working on. How do you actually draw that line? Because I find it difficult with people that are continuously and you watch them mm -hmm. around and around. I had a massive spiritual awakening in something called a therapeutic community. Oh yeah. I, I healed without medication. And I used to, some people, you could, people would say to them, if you gave up that trap of going round and round and round in circles, how would you feel? And do you see what I mean? That self, that, they, that you can't understand self-sabotage until someone actually explains it to you. And I find a lot of people go through that. So coming back to the question I'm asking you here is how did you stop that from being self-sabotage? Because you, yeah. some level of awareness, you knew that this was moving you forward. So can you explain the difference maybe? Yeah. You understand what I'm getting at? Well, what I, even though I definitely had aspects of self-sabotage in it, what I was doing was, it definitely had self-sabotage in it, but really it was more about learning from life. Now, I wouldn't recommend it for everyone, and it's not a thing that you should feel like you should have to do. In fact, the it, it, at all, because it's definitely a life path for someone that's here to learn hard and fast, and that means that you fall on your ass a lot. But for me, as I started trying to actually have goals that I really cared about, that's where the self-sabotage came in because I had such low self-worth. I had so much fear that my sabotage was actually trying to protect me from all the worst things happening, which is what, you know, I, I, how I work with sabotage. I actually find the reason that I'm sabotaging now and I reason with it. Like sabotage is, doesn't mean that we're broken. In fact, it's from a very intelligent part of us that made a decision, usually when we were kids, of how life is and so how we're going to protect ourselves. And okay, so it's about so finding what that reason is and then changing your mind about it. Now that might take energy okay. work and definitely some reasoning but yeah, it's really about looking at what you want and what is so scary about it, what could go wrong, what could mess up, and then you find the root cause and then you can change your mind about it. Okay, that's a really good explanation because I've, the big question that I ask myself is why people keep putting all this stuff out on social media that is hurting them. Continually, yeah. they're putting out stuff, fear-based stuff that, I know it's not true and it doesn't, I, it doesn't do anything to me whatsoever. 
I know I'm watching a movie and you know, yeah exactly <laughs> lots of movies one after the other one ends and another begins but these are people that are very awake and very wise in so many ways and if for some reason you this is something some kind of pattern you're saying that's coming from their childhood can you explain a little bit are we talking about social justice warriors who get really upset at people and then try to tell them how to live their lives is that no no i'm i'm talking about uh people that are just putting out whatever they see on some people are watching the media and as i say even enlightened beings that uh, i know they're enlightened because from some angles you they're so enlightened but they're putting out like for example someone put on yesterday and it was like what the hell are you talking about apparently covid has a whole year of incubation and i thought a child knows that that's impossible why are you putting it out there and then they say to you oh, why won't you face this and i said well why are you putting it out there what is in this for you what it's like you're sabotaging your happiness all yeah. the time well it's because they've entered into an agreement with occult for forces basically the whole media is built upon and now this might sound crazy to new people but believe me i've been studying this for decades it's true it's built upon occult forces because the people who own it are into some are into dark magic let's just say what it is and they are controlling the masses by hypnotizing them through the media now what also happens is they give these little crumbs of truth in hollywood movies so that you say oh no that's in a movie you're crazy for saying that okay so they give all these little truths they'll tell you to, they'll even tell you to your face out of their mouth sometimes but people are so glazed over like when dr burks told everyone that they're putting down people dying from covid even if they just have it in their system and they didn't die from it mm. and but she says it right to people's faces but because they're so indoctrinated into the lie because it's harder to convince someone that they've been fooled then it, yeah it's easier to fool someone than it is to convince them that they've been fooled yeah. so this yeah. whole media machine is a really intelligent multi-century operation from very organized people who want to control the masses and people enter into these i'm hearing like dark agreements with them all these like things that they put out um things that like people just believe in so much they believe in the media they believe that they're a savior they believe they're just reporting the facts they don't understand that they actually make up the news to go along with a manipulative agenda to control opinion so that people give their freedoms away willingly for anyone that wants to know it's called the hegelian dialectic it's a three-step process that they use to incite fear and then sell you this solution that will actually enslave you and this is this happening is every day i've never heard of that the hegel say that again hegelian h-e-g-e-l-i-a-n what does hegelian mean it's actually an, a name hegel h-e-g-e-l is the person who invented it and um it's called the hegelian dialectic and it's actually hard to find out what it is when you do a first search on it because a lot of it's hidden but if you look deeper and you look outside the mainstream media there's a lot of information upon what the hegelian dialectic really is and it's everything from how 9 11 was perpetrated so that they could bring in the patriot act the patriot act and therefore start dismantling the constitution so that they could have more government and give more power to the state and then they convince people that it's all there that that they're doing good for the people and then the people become their own private army um rejecting people and hating people and cancelling people when they try to speak the truth because they think that they're on the right side but because they're believing such intense lies they're feeling all this feedback in their system telling them that they're lying and then they're projecting that pain that they're feeling on other people trying to tell the truth mm -hmm. It's like they're being hypnotized but coming back to exactly. self-sabotage because again I, I do i find it a very interesting subject yeah um because to me um well i i believe that you can't stop it until you're aware that you're doing it exactly 100 percent. the steps that people need to take i mean i was in this community for nearly two years so it took me about a year to understand 
um, it wasn't on a conscious level, mm. a huge awakening, realizing that my childhood wasn't my fault. And yeah. it was massive, and it happened overnight after a huge amount of work. It suddenly a light bulb went off. But that is unusual. <laughs> That's unusual. It doesn't always happen. So what are the steps that people can use? Because as I say, to me, it amazes me when a friend contacts me and this friend has been enlightened and suddenly they're like going through this pattern again. And I try mm. to say something to them like, I can help you, you know, set your goals or do this because, you know, I do a lot of this stuff. And, they put, and, they, and then the phone goes and they say, I've got to go now. Yeah. Go now because, and, and I said, you do that every single time, but they won't face it. So can you explain how you work with people? What are the steps and how did you get to it? How did you, be, how did you form whatever it is you use, the program? How did you get to it, to understanding how to get people out of self-sabotage? I have a lot of life experience, a lot of self-sabotage from me. I've, uh, I used to have PTSD. I would get very reactive and angry. I had social anxiety and I would like take things so personally and I'd, I'd cry if someone said they were going to call me and they didn't and I'd go into like fits and I was like really had mental health issues because I'm such a sensitive system and a strong empath and I was also had a victim mindset. So the first thing is to realize that everything that happens in this reality is to realize that you are the master of your own reality and that nobody can actually be blamed for what's happening to you. Okay, so that's a really bitter pill for some people to swallow. It doesn't mean that you were aware of it. In fact, a lot of the time it's not. You're not aware of it. But you always have the power to be able to see it and see how, oh, if I hadn't have even turned up that day, then that fight wouldn't have happened. Okay, we'll see how even though you didn't, you weren't able to control it then, you can look at your past mistakes and say, oh, well, even though that clearly wasn't my fault, Oh, but then again, if I hadn't have snapped, then maybe that person wouldn't have punched me in the face, you know? <laughs> so it's, it's, it's not about, it's the opposite to victim blaming. You're literally just taking responsibility for how your energy really can incite other people and how it literally, it controls everything. You can always change your energy and shift your energy. But when it comes to finding self-sabotage, I always... You can go into a few ways, but the main way I like to do it is by looking at a person's desires because your desires actually light the way. I always say your desires light the way to your bigger desires. So the way to know what to do is by following your actual desires. But then we have all this self-sabotage, all the fear and the cravings and the neediness and the need to approve or to prove ourselves. And that will all get in the way. So it's our true desires can be buried underneath the fear. So one of the simplest things that any viewer can do right now is to get really honest with yourself about your desire and then let yourself do a negative visualization. See, one thing that some spiritual negative. people... Yeah. Yeah, uh, there's a real big reason. See, okay. one thing that spiritual people do very, I'm just going to say it wrong, <laughs> is that they spiritual bypass and they're scared of their negative emotions. Mm -hmm. So let me explain it. You do a negative visualization where you see your desires and then you imagine, okay, well, let's say that happens. Okay, I'm, I've got the keys to the house now. I'm living there. It's really amazing. But something goes wrong. What is it? And then you imagine the negative thing and you go, Oh, I'm secretly scared that I won't be able to keep up with the payments and I'll lose the house and I'll be on the street and my husband will divorce me and I'll be all alone and I'll be a homeless bag lady. <gasps> you would be surprised <laughs> like how often things like that come out. It's almost every time. And so... Yeah, I recognize it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? So you don't want to be scared of the negative. You want to bring it up because... Yeah, it's, it's happening anyway, right? It's banging around in there, creating in the background. Every time you have like, every time you think of, let's say in this example, getting the house, you think consciously you're working towards it, but then all of a sudden you have an energy dropping like, ooh, I just don't feel like it for some reason. Well, go in and investigate that feeling. Like, what is this feeling really thinking? The feeling has an opinion. If you take one thing away from this, 
It's really to understand that every single feeling you have, every sickness in your belly, every illness and issue has an emotional, uh, an, a logical opinion behind it. And if you can find its opinion and give it love and help it re and reason with it, you can change its mind and you'll be able to let go of any issue. Okay. So you're talking about acceptance here, aren't you? You're talking about accepting the different identities and the different parts of us. Wow. Yeah, and that, that was always me. That was always, because I don't have kids and it's just me and my husband, two cats. As you get older, we don't have our own home. It's like, oh my God, oh my God, I'm going to end up in the streets. I'm going to end up, you know, thrown away, yada, yada. Um, but that actually motivates me. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Motivates me. I've used that to motivate me to change my life, to get out yeah. there. But um, also, it's interesting because um, we want everything very quickly. Mm. People don't understand that they have to graft, they have to put energy and focus every single day, even if it's a tiny little action. Yeah. Again, I was having this conversation with someone. She said, oh, I don't get any likes and I'm really fed up. And, and then I said, well, I've been doing this now for 40 days. I've been focusing every single day for 40 days. 40 days, that's it. And I'm not getting enough likes and enough subscriptions. But this time, I'm not paying any attention to it. This is how different it is. Because in the past, that would have been it for me. It would have been yeah. oh, I'm not getting anywhere. What's the point? I didn't feel like it today. I do an awakening every single day. I do from dark to light every single day now for nearly 40 days. And I thought, I can't be bothered. Don't want to do it today. <laughs> and then I thought, I got up and I saw people are going through so much. And I thought, maybe one person will watch this and it will change their day or, or something. I'm doing it. And I just got out there and I did it. I love that. I try to explain to people and they say to me, why didn't you get upset, Lauren, when they cut you off uh, Facebook? Because they cut me off um, doing posts because it said something I shouldn't have said and I wasn't yeah. allowed to do live. I've, I'm banned from live at this present moment. Pardon? I'm, I'm banned from doing live stream at this yeah. present moment for three months. Uh, yeah, yeah, we're waiting That's for it's real. Trump to take over <laughs> to get social media back. And, and they said, how come you're not upset? You, you didn't get upset at all. And I thought, well, I did get a bit upset because I have 4,000 um, um, friends on there, sort of. I don't know anymore, but, you know, sort of. And um, it put me back onto moving on TV. I took back my passion. I took back this. because I yes. it. And that was the silver lining for me. And I thought, well, that's why I'm loving every minute of it. I'm developing it. And as I say, I have time. You know, there's lots of time to go. You know, you can't expect everything to happen overnight. So mm -hmm. what you're saying here is fascinating because we all have these identities. Or we have family. I'm lucky I have no one in my ear saying, you've only got you know <laughs> oh yeah you need to never listen to those people oh my god but it is difficult and so that's my next question people do have that mm. and they are very connected sometimes to their family they're people pleasers i'm not saying that in a, in a bad way but that's one of the personalities and a lot of the time it will be like oh you know you're not getting anywhere and they'll drop it and they'll go back to doing what that person, that other person, that voice in the head, it could be anyone, it could be from the past, is telling them all the fear of the future. So again, you're saying the passion and the desire, Tony Robbins always said that, has got to be so big. What else, what else? If, could you give us an example of your own life, of how you use this to, to overcome? Uh, with the people in my ear type thing. Pardon? Of an example of what specifically? Yeah, something in your own life mm -hmm. where you, yeah, you have people in your ear. That's an interesting. Okay, thing. well, I'm really good at this, so I'm the right person to ask. Um, first of all, for our lovely people, please, and viewers, I just would like to give you a real 
heartfelt message that ultimately you're not helping anyone by people pleasing. I know that it like feels so strong, but at the same time, when you constantly give in to others that can lead to resentment and you're actually training them how to treat you and then you have to, no judgment here, but you have to suck energy from other people to make up from the energy that you allow your loved ones to essentially steal and take from you when you don't actually desire to give it. So when you reinforce sorry, yourself, can you, can you, sorry, when you say suck energy, you, mm -hmm. can you explain that? Cause that sounds like, you you know, a bit, uh, people don't, would not, wouldn't like that. They feel like you're needy, wouldn't they? Yeah, absolutely. Suck, people people please is energy for someone. Yeah, well, we're constantly always swapping energy. That's what people mm. do. We're electromagnetic beings. We're actually a soul and an aura. Where our oh, sorry, electric... did you say swap energy? Yeah, we're constantly swapping That's energy. Swap back energy. Forward. Sorry, swap. Sorry, I thought I heard. Suck. I did say suck earlier. Right. Okay. Yeah. But yeah. So you say, when you say that, it gives people would think more you know, I don't want that person around me. They're like a vampire of some kind. Well, yeah, it's very easy to turn into a vampire when you're not looking after your own needs and you're constantly yeah. looking to other people to fulfill your needs. It doesn't make you a bad person. It's just something that humans do, but most people sort of do that. You know, it's very easy to do, to, to take yeah. energy from others. And it's even like things like demanding their attention when they don't want to give it. And so you get upset. Like that's a definition of a codependent relationship. Yeah. And know? that could be some kind of self-sabotage when you know that person can only take so much. Yeah, exactly. So you're talking more about swapping energy in order to develop your skills. Is that what you're saying? Uh, no, I just mean like how people naturally interact. Like we naturally, literally even us talking here, we're swapping energy through our electromagnetic fields. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but anyway, okay. So an example from my life is, and this is really going to help. And I really let you know you have permission to do this is when somebody's talking to you that you love to bits, but they drain your energy, I hereby give you permission and everyone watching to nudge your head politely and go to a different place, okay? It is actually better for everyone involved if you're not going into this power dynamic where you're secretly thinking, ugh, inside, and they're talking at you because that's when they're also getting energy from you and you're giving them their energy by going, ugh, like this, and you're wilting. Whereas if you, one way not to be drained by other people as empaths, because I don't get drained by people anymore, is you watch your posture. Watch your posture. Are you going, oh, like this as you're feeling them? Are you judging what they're saying? Or are you sympathizing too much with what they're saying? And so if you really keep your posture straight, like comfortably straight, and you maintain your energy field, it's like a feeling. You just feel -ing. It's a feeling. And you like have this straight feeling and while you're listening to them, you're nodding politely and you're listening somewhere else. You're thinking about something else that's actually good for you. Then that's going to benefit everyone in the future. I also like to shut conversations down. I'm a very big fan of being like, um, I'm not available to talk about this. Like, no, I'm shutting this conversation down. Like I say it to my husband all the time. He, I said it to him yesterday and he walked back in the room to talk to me about the same thing. I was not interested. I'm like, and I said it in a very joking tone and I'm like, um, Sorry, I've, I've already shut this conversation down. You can come back later when you have something that I'm interested in hearing about. And he just laughed and walked out the room because that's our relationship. I've trained him <laughs> yeah. to train people how to treat you. So I've trained him essentially just from him when he first met me that he knew that I'm the type of person who doesn't talk about things that I don't want to talk about. And I don't give energy to people who I don't want to. So, and you can always redefine relationships too with people. You may have to sit down and use nonviolent communication about the four, there's four steps you can use for nonviolent communication to change the dynamics of a relationship. So mm -hmm. yeah, my little tips for that. Wow. Okay. So again, going back a bit further, how did you happen to bring this all together? How did you learn it? Where did this all come from? You didn't just w wake up one day and think, I, I figured it all out. <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> I mean, I've always been quite clear cognizant, so I do sort of just know some things. <laughs> but um, 
uh, just experience, just learning through life. Every time I'd have one of those negative experiences I talked about at the start, I'd always look at what I could learn from it. Like, okay, well, when I did this, what was the reaction? And then I'd go and try again in another social situation and I'd fail spectacularly. And I would be like, okay, so now let's alter it a little bit. And I just saw life as one big experiment. But mm -hmm. where I really first started learning... I mean, it was, it's all through my life. It's been gradual, real gradual, but then there's been big things along the way. Like when I had the nervous breakdown in San Francisco and I got into energy healing, uh, specifically this really spiritual type of EFT. And uh, through my teacher, Sonia Safir, I went to some of her retreats, which were like intense, multi, like five to seven hours of tapping a day for days in a row. Like just loads and loads and loads of energy. Like, like I mean, a lot. And mm -hmm. it was just exp spiritual experiences one after the other. And I just kept going with it. And I had a knack from, for it. Like the first person I gave a session to outside, like during the my first ever retreat with my EFT workshop, the first class swap I did like on the second weekend, the person who I led it through, he just looked at me when I was finished. And he's like, wow, that was absolutely life-changing. And that was before I even knew what I was doing, but it just, I always had a knack for knowing how to heal people. And I think that's because I've had so much trauma, so much pain, such a victim mentality that I've overcome now because I never blame others for what's happening to mm -hmm. me, except my husband sometimes. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's usually a joke and I stop myself. Um, but yeah, just, um, just, just learning from life and then going into like doing thousands of hours of energy work. Okay, so again, going backwards to the breakdown that you had, usually the, the minute you have any kind of breakdown, did you go and see any doctors? No. Any medication? No. What, mm -hmm. How did you manage not to have to go through that route? I've always had very, like, as I said, I'm an extreme person. Um, I've had extreme strong beliefs against allopathic medicine for me personally. Um, it probably, I mean, I was always a very shaky belief, but it was probably about mm, a decade before the nervous breakdown. I had a decade before that I had chronic fatigue and it was like real problem. I was, even just sitting there and breathing took too much energy out of me. And I know why it happened. It was because a lot of the things that happened beforehand, it's a long story too long for here, but so I know why it happened. But when I went to the doctors, they did all these tests and yes, all my things were out of whack. But the thing is doctors don't understand that they're just symptoms. Doctors think that symptoms have to be taken away, but symptoms are actually your body healing itself. So when they repress symptoms, they repress your body's ability to heal and they send the sickness deeper into your body. So anyway, I went and had all these tests done and when they finally realized that they had no fucking idea what was wrong with me, they just handed me a prescription. And I swear, this is what happened. She was standing up, the doctor handed me the prescription, and I said to her so innocently, I said, so how long will I have to take these for? She looked me straight in the eye, and she went, oh, you'll take these forever. You'll always be sick. Oh. And, oh, no, I think she, she said, you'll always have this, were her exact words. And I swear, I heard a cracking sound, like thin glass or ice, and it went crack. And that was the last of my faith in the allopathic medicine system gone. So I threw that prescription in the bin. Um, and I, even though I didn't know anything about healing, I just knew that wasn't my life. And I went home and healed myself within eight months. Okay. Wow. <laughs> That's amazing. You know, yeah. and um, similar. <laughs> yeah. I diagnosed. I was a student of A Course in Miracles already. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was very lucky. I, again, everything happens perfectly. And the psychiatrist said to me, will you take medication? I said, no, I won't touch it. I don't want to get physically sick as well. Why would I? Exactly. But I didn't know what to do. I was in a really bad place. A lot of PTSD as well. And I believe in that. I don't believe in all the other conditions that are out there. It's just shock. We're all shocked. Yeah, it's really just all forms of PTSD. Mm. And when we get that shock to our system, then it starts compounding into um, disease, especially when we don't change our life or look at it or forgive all these sorts of things. But I heal sciatica in people. I've healed 
fibroids and swelling of the womb and chronic fatigue in my clients, all these sorts of things. And it's the exact same method that I use for healing anxiety. We just do a bit of an extra bit in it. And it's always got this logical component underneath. It's like, so for instance, my client who I heal from sciatica, she had nine years of excruciating sciatica. The doctor said she would only be able to fix it by having an invasive operation, but they were wrong. She didn't do any of that. She came to work with me instead. And it turned out that her sciatica started because of, she was people pleasing her husband who they're not together now. And she was doing some sort of housework that she felt very underappreciated of and thought he should be there to help her. It was some heavy lifting. And so she hurt herself on that. And then from there, she didn't know any of this. We found this out during the session. And then from there, her body, her spirit, her, her being made the decision that she couldn't be trusted to make her decisions because she stayed in that relationship for years longer than she knew she should have. And so the sciatica was developed to stop her from making decisions that would greatly affect her life. And as we started healing those aspects of her and helping her trust herself more and doing the energy work on the sciatica, it just healed. Amazing. Mm. Is it the body has such an incredible intelligence. Yeah. Um, you know, my journey has been through homeopathy and the journey, yeah. you say, and all of that stuff. So what type, what do you use? Have you created your own modality, your own type of energy healing, or is it a um, I use a mix plus, yeah, I use a mix plus I use my own. So I use a mix of what my teacher taught me, Sonia Sophia, and she uses a mix of EFT and she does a lot of like, a lot of breathing and yelling and sighing and visualization. And so I do all of that. Plus I have, um, I'm a micromanager. So I love to micromanage my healing. So when you're in a healing with me, I will tell you exactly when to breathe, how to breathe, how to move your shoulders, how to relax your face, exactly how to do all these things because I know how to get, I know how the mind body connection and we hold on to stuff. So when you just relax and open the cells of your body, all the negativity can just pass right through. It's like that simple, but it takes a lot to be able to get you there. Mm -hmm. So I've also developed this technique called, that I call the emotional alchemy breath. And it's where it's the, it's the number one thing that I use to dissolve physical disease. And it's, it's just I, it's too much to explain, but it's combined with a breath and a type of visualization that I can't really explain it. You have to experience it, but it dissolves trauma. It dissolves, it dissolves physical issues. Fantastic. And I believe in it 100%. I believe yeah. exactly what you're saying. Everything's connected, not only the mind and the body, but the body itself is connected. If yeah. everything goes out, if something goes out of um, alignment, it affects everything else. And I find it very difficult to understand why people don't understand what yeah, they, they feel um, very separate believe. and alone. Sorry? I, yeah, I find it difficult. It's common sense to me. When I, when I first learned about chemotherapy, we had a big cancer strain. Oh, wow. When I watched my mother, I kept thinking, this is not right. There's something not right here. The immune system is beautiful. It heals everything. You cut yourself, it heals. What are they doing? And that's where my awakening started a lot around wow. medicine. And I knew there was something wrong. And then I put everything together. I thought it's all one. It's all the same. Yeah, it but is. We are in World War Three without even knowing it. You know, we're... we're yes. Yeah. Yes, it's, it's the it's the people, it's the, the small group of people who are literally own the world against everyone else and all these people don't know they're in a war and they're actually defending these tyrants that are trying, it's just, it's a mess. But people are waking up, the more we do our inner work, the more we speak the truth, the more awake we become and the less we can be controlled. Yes, and I think I kind of, I found you, I think it was uh, on the... Uh, Jack Edward Kidd, I think that's how we connected. Okay. He is an action orientated person because again, that's something I keep trying to get out to light workers. You can't just sit there and meditate all day and it's you've <laughs> got to go out there and you've got to do the work. You've got to sign the petitions. You've got, yes, we change our consciousness, but you don't just lie there and expect something else to fix yeah. it. 
It's not and for, for some people that'll look like going to to council town council meetings and there was a, a town council meeting somewhere in the world in the last year that they were going to take away religious exemptions for vaccines therefore making vaccines mandatory and a small group of people got thousands of people together and they all came down to the town hall during the meeting and they had to throw it out oh wow <laughs> this is it people power I yeah. believe 100% in people power and I believe that we're winning. And that's why, you know, when you believe, you know you're winning, um, but we have to. It, it's like, what, what choice have we got? Yeah. <laughs> and we want a much better world. We want to see a world. See, I believe that everyone deserves what you've got to offer, what I've got to offer. And I'm a great believer in bartering. I love bartering. I think if people woke up every day and thought, I don't have to worry about bills because everything is bartered and, you know, you can live in a beautiful house and do the garden and share. And that's very much my consciousness. And oh, that sounds lovely. Oh, wouldn't it be great if, it's, if the world, I think it is going to go that way because so much is changing. So, okay, but tell us a little bit about the healer of healers that you have on your uh, Facebook page. Do you want to talk a little bit? Yeah. Well, I find that I attract healers. Like I mostly, I'm not primarily, but I mostly work with a lot of healers. People are already very gifted. And I've noticed that pretty much exclusively all of my clients and my followers, they have this, 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 this heartbeat of, of need to impact the world positively. We all have this vision that we can make the world a better place. And to me, a healer is just someone that has been through their own stuff, learned how to heal themselves and then shared it with others. That's all I really believe a healer is. Um, but yeah, for me, it's, I'm here to, be a big spiritual teacher i'm here to actually help people understand not to be scared of the negative to embrace the negative sides of themselves so they can bring it into the light and just to put it most simply change their mind about it <laughs> mm -hmm. so that they can find what feels safe so yeah i've worked with um i've helped to launch many businesses and helped coaches and healers and other types of entrepreneurs to release their blocks so that they can step into their passions and go to those next levels and i find it's great working with healers because you know you already understand the type of methods but then my stuff just takes it those next those next levels mm. deeper is because we I actually help you go into the actual cellular structure of your body and it's like a car wash for the inside of your body we literally wash out the trauma from your cells with the breath so the fear is just like being sucked out with a spiritual vacuum cleaner and then that gives you much more ability to take action wow so uh, it sounds amazing I mean I, I did an interview with Brad Yates last oh week. yeah tapping and this is another thing that I wanted to ask you is why do people, spiritual people, not know how to earn enough money? And I'm not really talking about the, the feeling of we're not good enough or we're too spiritual. There seems to be something else that holds us. I know it's held me back for years and years and years. Um, for me, for, I, I love my work so much that if someone said to me, Will you do it? I just do it, you know, yeah. love it. And hopefully the money will follow at some point. But a lot of people like that, spiritual people are like that. They're not on, on that, they, they came to this planet with this huge passion, huge creativity, like indigos. I'm an indigo, you're probably an indigo. Uh, they knew that they're different. They have this huge creativity. I mean, I can write musicals standing on my head. <laughs> I've always been able to sing everything, run theater. But when it comes to being that like focus, marketing, doing the accounts, oh my God. You know, it's like, it's, it's a different world. It's completely yeah. right-sided. So what would you suggest to the people that I know that are going to watch this? And Brad, Brad and I, we did do some tapping around it, but I'm interested in also your perception of how can you help those people? It's very easy. Throw yeah. out every abundance. single thing. Have more abundance. Throw out every single thing that you've been taught about marketing. Forget about it. Let it go. Push it out the door. 
It's all just something that's worked for somebody else, which sounds good, but the only thing that will work for you is what you desire to do. Mm. Okay, so there's that aspect. We're trying, we've got really to answer your question about why, it's about people are trying to work off old beliefs of how you have to make money and how money works. Okay, money doesn't work the way that people have been taught it works. Money is, it just is. Money is a constant energy that is always available and it responds to our thoughts. It comes from God, the universe, the divine source of love. Okay, so it literally comes to us through other people, but from God, which is the imagination within us. So I know that's a lot of words at once, but our imagination is what causes us to have money or not. It's what we expect. If we expect it's going to come, but genuinely and actually and really and truly, truly expect. And that's why we can't pretend to be positive. It's killing people to pretend to be positive when secretly they've got this lump in their throat and the sinking feeling in their stomach, which has an opinion saying, this isn't going to work. Money can't be easy. You might get hurt. They might reject you. So people have to get very honest with themselves about what that lump in their throat is actually thinking. And understand that money doesn't work how we were told. It doesn't have to. It can work in a whole new way, which is where you expect it. You align with it, which means that you think, if I already had the money, who would I be? What life would I be living? What action would I be taking? And then you take that action not to get the money, but because that's who you are. And so as we start living into who we truly are, which... Yes, it will bring in the money because likely we'll have to do with service or creating amazing products and things like that. But you have to learn how to compartmentalize. You, you do what you do because you can't not do it. And then you also expect money and you also find the reasons that you don't expect it. You heal it through energy work and just talking to it and you change your mind about it. And then when it comes to back to the start, you have to, I mean, I'm not even being glib, throw everything you think you know away about marketing. You only want to think this one question, what feels right? Not, not, what, not what would sell or not what will work or not what will feel right for other people, but what would actually light you up to do? And so you have to give yourself permission to stop thinking that you have to know everything straight away and start asking questions. Start imagining the end result of what you desire and get really honest with yourself about what that is. And then from there, when you set your mind like the GPS, which is what it is, that's, and you ask questions, then ideas can pop into your head. And then you just do the next thing now. It's like, what is the thing that you feel aligned to do now? You want to write? You know you're a writer? Then write every day. Okay, now being aligned, it doesn't mean that you do what you feel like doing. In fact, you often don't feel like doing what you're aligned to do because alignment isn't what you feel like doing. Alignment is being a match to the image of the version of you who is already living the life that you want. So you have to match the version of you who's already living the life that you want. And that means that if you're already living the ideal life, would you be writing every day? Would you be filming frequently? Would you be exercising? Well, if they're all yeses, it won't be for everyone, but if it is for you, then you better make sure that you're matching that vision and you're not going to feel like it because it's going to feel scary, but you just got to do it anyway. It's interesting listening to you. I, I had about eight months of life coaching with um, a really exciting program and I really felt I was getting nowhere it was on my beliefs and my values and then the minute the lockdown happened that was it I knew exactly what I, I needed to do I felt yeah. that's it I'm, I fit exactly where I need to fit I'm, I'm able to use all these things that I've learned everything that I've learned in, in all these years but also the last eight months suddenly it all came together and love that so it's really interesting what you're saying. And yesterday I, I was talking to one of my friends and he's become very focused as well. And he's on here, Messengers of Light. He, he did the first program. And he, I said, moving on TV is like my playground. <laughs> People say to me, why don't you do just one program? I like focus on this. No, it's a TV station. You're not getting it. It's like 
um, Sky, it's like ITV, it's like BBC, but it's for you. Aww. It's for everyone. It's taking the, you from the dark into the light. It's, there is free speech for everyone. And there's everything, there's comedy, there's entertainment, there's everything that I am. Like I wake up one day and I think, today I want to do a program about food, you know? Yeah, and so you do that. And I do it, and, and that's it. And, and that's, and, and now people say, oh, I get it, it's a TV station, yeah. And so I focus on that, and I'm also writing a musical. So I've got two things that I'm focusing on at the moment that I put all my energy into. And I'm just doing it because, as you say, you love it. Get yeah. up. And because you know that you're putting your million percent, it's every single person put a million percent into building this new consciousness like we are, then you're going to get a beautiful new world. And so when I go to bed or even I, I leave a program to export, to edit, well, I mean, when I go to bed, whatever time it is, 5 a.m. in the morning probably now, everything's upside down. I know I've done my work and I feel contented. I may not have earned anything, but it doesn't seem at the moment I'm safe financially because I did get a grant for the musical I'm writing only because we're in lockdown. So again, I got some money, but it's, it's like I go to bed and I know I've done it. And it doesn't matter who says to me, like when my father was alive, the first thing he would say is, are you earning anything? And then I would drop. Mm -hmm. He went, since he moved on, that's gone completely. And, I, and the freedom of knowing that I can do exactly, my husband is amazing. He supports me completely with this. Even though he's like, it sounds like your husband. Sometimes I go, bah, bah, and <laughs> went, ah. yeah, because he's not completely, he's a Libran. And everything's got to be like that. And I'm a Leo. <laughs> oh, yeah. What sign are you? Uh, my sun sign's Aquarius. You're Aquarius, right? Yeah. But again, it's quite balanced, you know. I have, my Mars is in Libra, though. Pardon? My Mars is in Libra. Right. Mm. Libra is beautiful. I think uh, Libra are very good for Leos. <laughs> I know mm. that. But anyway, so how do people get in touch with you and how long are your sessions um, and where do you promote yourself? Um, the best place is either Facebook on my Facebook profile or you can come through my page. My name's Kai Ashley, K-A-I-A-S-H-L-E-Y. Um, but what I'd really love to invite you to do is to join my email community, which at the moment my website is vibrantsuccess.com club like vibrant success club and um if you join my email community then you'll get a lot of my um you know my good transformational offerings and you'll get insights and inspirations really great things so join my email list and then you can email me through there or you can find me on instagram or of course youtube so definitely subscribe to my youtube channel and try my youtube videos as for my private sessions, they are epic journeys. They're so amazing. They're always, always, always incredible. And they take around 90 minutes, sometimes a little less, sometimes quite a bit more because I don't charge by time. I always go to the deepest places to get you the biggest transformation. Um, I do work with clients on a long-term basis. So I'm only working with people who are, who've had their, as I call it, their fuck this moment where they're so ready for change that they want to change their entire life. This is why I'm really good at working with people with um, illness and disease and stuff and when, or like real big anxiety because these people have a big motivation to change things. But at the same time, the common thread is that I generally work with people that are either spiritual entrepreneurs or um, ambitious career women, people that really want to move forward and create big things, but they have things holding them back. And so I'm here to help you get your goals and create wonderful, um, like um, heart guided, soul guided, God guided, beautiful, universal guided things. And then we remove all the blocks in the way. So I do oh, also okay. have a discounted intro session at the time being of filming. Yeah, I was going to ask clients. you about people yeah. that have lost so much. How does that work? That have lost? 
people that have lost so much. So can you work with people that, you know, in this lockdown and the way things are at the moment? Do you well, I have tons of free content. I have so much free content that any person that is um, determined can go through hours of it and have a very good result, manifest money, maybe even like manifest relationships or opportunities. I also have some low end digital programs, which are really helpful. Some that are like really quite inexpensive, but yeah, I also have a lot of free content, low end content uh, for people that just are willing to do the work and are ready. It's I've made it all available so that there's That's loads it. there so that people can can do it. it's all on my youtube channel and on my course platform the vibrant success club great i can't wait and just one more question before um i let you go is it is connected again to the way we're living at the moment and which is total uncertainty <laughs> and i i was just thinking about that that we are meant to go through this. We are meant to, mm -hmm. to feel uncertainty. One of the things we don't get to feel in life is helplessness and uncertainty. We go straight into fear and anger, I think. So this is giving people really an opportunity. But surely, are you getting people um, that can't actually make plans at the moment? I mean, how can you make plans at the moment, Kai? Well, you just decide that the economy and the world doesn't affect you and then you go ahead and you make the plans and you take action. Right, okay. It gets to be that simple. But then we right. complicate it with all these thoughts and all these doubts. And But no, yeah. just disconnect from what's happening in the world and make your plans and know that when you actually improve your own life, then you'll be able to improve other people. So yeah. don't worry about what's happening in the world. Just go ahead and make your plans and do it. Go for it. Just keep doing it in spite of the fact that that we we could be having a complete overall of the financial system it's still you can still help people to understand how they can fit within that well i mean i don't see any sign that the financial system is going to be torn down in the next few days or years yeah. you know i would say just continue continue what feels right for you look for your desires go after them like money isn't the problem like it's not like we have to tear money down because money is just a form of barter as well it's just exchanging um one form of value for another but it's it really is about not worrying what everyone else is doing and just doing what you're doing because you are your own personal economy so you're the economy like any everyone watching you are the economy Okay, I am the economy. The economy isn't this big bad thing that happens out there in the world, it, unless you buy into the beliefs. But if you actually stand strong in your desires and have blinkers on, you will attract people into your life that are of the same ilk, that are just mm. the same. And I also believe that those people that have lost their businesses, they will pick themselves up. Because yeah, they can, they absolutely can. All you just have to do is- They will be able to do it again. Mm. Of course. I mean, people are, of course, like it doesn't even make sense for them not to. The only reason they wouldn't is if they think that they can't. So, mm -hmm. I mean, since the lockdown, I've actually increased my income, wow. you know? Mm -hmm. So that's because of a pig headed belief that I have that the economy does not affect my reality. So as soon as the lockdown came into place, I used that belief, which is just a statement I agree with and I say over and over again, I use that belief to say, no, the economy doesn't affect my reality. I'm showing up. I've been training for this my whole life. People need me now. So I showed up even more, got banned from Facebook Live, uh, but still that sent me over to YouTube more. And you just really, 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 truly have to disconnect from what's happening in the world and just live in your own reality and then you'll attract people into your own reality and you will create a new world. You don't have to live in all the negative stuff that's going on. It doesn't mean that you're ignorant or disillusioned. It's mean that you are choosing the best life for you, which means you're choosing the best earth for you. Right. Thank you, Kai. That's beautiful. And it's so wonderful to see how you've come through, you know, all of us that have been through so much, but we are, we have to go through that, as you said, 
the sun is coming out now in the UK. It's been a crazy day. You know, at some point the sun always comes out. And those of us that have been through, we've been molded, you know, to face this time now. I, I'm so strong and I'm so, I've been the happiest. I've been in, my, in so much power since this lockdown when other people have been just running around like frightened little rabbits. And then I've been just, why are you scared of that? I'm yeah. so, I get it because you have such a strong conviction, especially you know how to heal yourself and you've been doing it for years and years and years. And so when that came out, it was, oh, it's another flu. Oh, I'll do what I do or I'll ask somebody who knows. Yeah, exactly. It's and, and so we need to help as many people if they want to. If only if they want it. If they want to. You can't, you know, you can only take them to the water. You can't force them to drink. <laughs> yeah. I mean, people have every right to stay stuck if that's what they desire. Mm. It's that simple. Like we have lifetimes. We're going around for lifetimes. So it's not anyone's responsibility to force other people to grow. That's just not fair. Why don't you find the people that actually want your help and then go help them? Mm. <laughs> well, I'll definitely be looking at your YouTube videos and we're looking forward to it. Thank you so much. Go and enjoy the sun. It's, it's now 20 past six and the sun's come out. A bit like Spain, Mediterranean. Mm. <laughs> uh, we're in Buckinghamshire. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I have a friend, yeah, uh, Kimani. She's doing a lot of, she calls herself revolution. She's really I love that. to connect to. She's amazing. Absolutely amazing. She could do with you. I know at the moment we all <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. Kai. It's been beautiful. And um, have a beautiful day. What's left of it. And um, welcome to Moving On TV. Thank you so Thank you. much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.